Hey guys, what's going on? I am Nick and it's just a Honda Accord and I am coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona where it's 108 degrees today. So I'm actually doing the filming inside of my house because it is too hot uh, to be outside. And you'll notice behind me that there are various parts that are getting ready to go into my 10th gen Honda Accord. And I am doing a two part episode on my car audio install that I'm gonna be doing. If you own a 10th gen Honda Accord and you've been on the forums, on Facebook, it's a great car, a lot of great features about it. Number one common negative feedback I have heard about the Accord is in regards to its stock stereo. And it sounds like it's really bad if you have a sport or lower model. And on my car, I have a Touring and I still feel it doesn't cut the mustard. So in lieu of that, I am looking to do something about it. So what I am doing on my car is a lot of stuff. I am gonna be putting in upgraded front and rear speakers. I went with Orion uh, six and a half components. I'll talk about them in a little bit. I am putting in a eight inch free air sub in the stock location. And then I picked up a couple of Hyphonics four channel lamps to power my front and rear speakers and to power my eight inch sub with the possibility of adding a sub uh, in a box later if needed. Also gonna be doing some custom mounting to the backs of my seats and we'll also be putting on some Dynamat as well and in full candor, I haven't done a lot of what I'm about to do I am by no means a car audio expert. I've put in decks and speakers in a couple of cars, but I've really stayed away from fabrication. And, uh, and also full candor, I'm doing this uh, episode before I've received all my parts, before I've received the build. So I'm gonna tell you what my objectives are, which is what I'm doing now. And what I'm hoping that I get out of this is I hope I get really good sound little draw on the stock electrical system or not noticeable draw anyways and uh, not take up a big footprint in my trunk and with regard to the type of sound I'm looking to get I just want very rich detailed full sound and with my bass I just want to feel something I don't need it to shake my mirrors and rattle anything I don't want any rattles because of adding this system I just want really good full sound. So that's, that's my goal with really no negatives to it, if that's possible. So the format of the show is gonna be similar to other ones that I've done. The first thing I'm gonna do is refer you down into the description below where I have bookmarked different sections of the video. And I'm gonna start off by talking about the head unit and how do you get sound from it to go to an amp. And then I'm gonna be talking to you about my amps and how I'm gonna do the power cables and negatives, what my plan is for it. Then I will tell you about the speakers that I selected and how I'm planning on mounting them. And lastly, I'll be talking to you about how I plan on customizing the way I'm mounting this uh, to the back of my seat in addition to mounting the Dynamat. So it's kind of funny that I started, I realized that I wanted to do something about my car audio, realized pretty quick I was gonna need an amp um, to power some good speakers. Started going down that path and then I'm like, oh yeah, how the heck am I gonna connect to the stock system? And on this car and like most cars, the head unit is like integrated with the climate control and um, you know, different systems. Uh, you get OBD2 error codes if you get a check engine light. All types of things are integrated into that head unit. So replacing a head unit like in older cars isn't really an option on the Accord anymore. Um, but what is an option is picking up a line-out converter. And for me, I selected an L7, was it an LC7i line-out converter. And I did that because it has six channels um, that you can feed an amp. And uh, you know, then what you need to do is you need to tap into the sound um, that your stock deck is putting out 
and get it to feed into the line out converter. So then you go, how do you do that? A couple ways you can do it. You can actually run wires from your stock speakers, but that's a little clunky in my opinion. A cleaner option is that you can pick up a harness. I don't have the part number memorized off the top of my head. It's in the description below. There's a plug and play harness, plugs right into the stock head unit harness, and then it has wires running out of it. I've been told for all the different speaker inputs along with uh, remote power and ground wires. So, you know, that's great. So I'm planning on using that harness when it comes in. I'm gonna have a, a few uh, wires coming off a pigtail from it. And then I was going, okay, am I gonna mount my line out converter up front, like in the dash somewhere? And I'm going, that's, that sounds like a really bad idea because you're gonna wanna tweak tuning your line out converter um, based on how you like to listen to your music. So you're gonna want it somewhere that you can at least access without having to take panels apart. So I'm going, okay, I really am gonna to wanna to put this in the trunk. And the first thing I've thought of, being haunted by previous stereo installs, is when you run RCAs, um, and you also have your power cable for an amplifier, you always wanna run them on the opposite ends of the car to try and reduce the possibility of engine whine. So, I'm not sure if this is as applicable, it seemed like it to me, um, that you know I wanna have my audio control line out converter in the trunk, I need to have this harness up front, and then I was going to run wires um, you know, for each one of those uh, speaker wires and power input and so on and so forth all the way back. And I found, um, through the help of Facebook, that there's actually, pretty well insulated uh, bundle of wires you can get that's meant for this exact purpose. And when I get to it, you'll see that basically, um, you know, I'm going to solder these to the harness and I'm gonna run this bundle of wires down one side of the car and ultimately connect it to the line out converter. And with that, that is gonna accomplish how I'm gonna get sound out of the stock deck all the way back out to my line out converter so my line out converter can have RCAs hooked up. As to far as the amps, amps go, I haven't received either one yet, but I ended up selecting Hyphonics and I've used Hyphonics in the past and I've really liked their product, had very good luck with their uh, amplifiers. So I picked up two different amps, part numbers are in the description down below. Uh, both are four channel and basically for my front and rear components, I'm gonna be using each you know, channel going to each one of those sets of speakers, or each speaker and tweeter. And then for my eight inch sub, I picked up an additional amp and I'm just gonna bridge two out of the four channels to get more power um, to that one eight inch sub and then leave the other two channels on that amp not hooked up. But if I end up deciding that that eight inch free air sub that I selected doesn't give me enough oomph, um, I have that extra two channel to allow me to add a box and sub later. So in previous cars, I've always done a five channel amp. And normally the five channel amps I do are class D and they're the most efficient. And uh, the thing you'll find is that with class D amps, um, they're renowned for their efficiency. They're also known to not have the highest audio quality. And on my Corvette right now, I kind of feel, I know that I'm not getting as much performance out of my speakers that I should be getting. And another issue with the five channel amp is it isn't likely going to put, put out the watts RMS that you need if you're using all five channels. So again, um, based on what I'm wanting to do, I decide I'm gonna mix things up and not go with the five channel amp and just run the risk of underpowering my speakers. I decide I'm gonna do these two four channel amps and this time around I'm going with class AB uh, amps which are known for higher audio quality. Um, still reasonably efficient, hoping that there is no negatives to my stock electrical system. That's number one paramount thing for me. Um, so we'll see if that comes to fruition. Normally can tell pretty quick. 
Um, definitely in Phoenix, when uh, you're running AC headlights and it's 110 degrees outside, you'll know real quick um, if your electrical system's being overloaded. So I wanna avoid that. The other thing is uh, from a wiring standpoint, wanna mount the amps um, in the trunk of the car. Didn't wanna mount them to the box just because it adds a lot of weight to the box. If you need to pull the box out because you gotta throw a monster hockey bag in there or two, like I do routinely, um, I need the space. So um, I am going to be mounting the amps back there um, I am going to be running zero gauge wire, just one zero gauge power wire that runs all the way from the front to the back um, into the trunk. And from there, I picked up a distribution block, which will allow me to hook up that one zero gauge wire to and then split it into two four gauge power wires that go to each amp. And if math serves me correct, uh, I think wire doubles every two gauges. You guys can correct me if I'm mistaken in the comments. But uh, you know, going from zero uh, to four should be plenty of power for those two amps, should be fine. The other thing I had to do is um, each amp has their own ground. So same deal, I'm gonna have each amp's ground wire hooked up to this distribution block with one wire, um, just all four gauge going uh, to a chassis ground, probably in the trunk that I find. As far as speaker selection goes, I am taking a little bit of a leap of faith and my brother has been ranting and raving about these Orion um, XTR 65 speakers. And they are six and a half inch stock Accord speakers in the front and rear are 6.75. So something else that hasn't showed up is I ordered a couple of speaker adapters um, from 6.75 to 6.5 so that I can mount these guys up. They also come with dedicated tweeters and likely gonna require a little bit of modification um, to get them to fit into the stock location. Maybe just some silicon, I don't know yet. I'll figure it out, I'll get it done. But uh, these speakers do crave um, a lot of power. And uh, I made sure that the amp I selected is going to give it to them. So not gonna have any issues on that. The other thing I did was um, select this Pioneer uh, amp, or not amp, eight inch subwoofer. And it is a low profile free air sub. I'm hoping it fits. Um, I have been told that if you want to upgrade the eight inch sub in that location, you typically have to dremel out that circular hole a little bit because there's a couple tabs. So again, I'm aware of it, but we'll see how it goes when I actually get there. And uh, I'm hoping that this gives me enough um, base that I'm satisfied, but if not, I can pretty cheaply and easily add. The last couple of pieces to this is that I am going to be installing Dynamat inside of both of my front doors while I have them apart. I'm also gonna be installing Dynamat in the trunk lid. And I'm sure I'll have some left over. I'll probably put some in the trunk too. And wherever else um, makes sense while the car is apart. The other thing I've read um, on the forums and Facebook is that the rear deck lid, particularly around the third brake light, is known to rattle. Um, so I picked up some of this uh, foam rod. It's a 5 8 inch, and I'm basically planning on tucking it around that edge that meets the glass to prevent any rattles. So with any luck, no rattles. Gonna have the some other thing I'll show you is that this is the area I'm planning on mounting my amps and my LC7i uh, to. And basically what I did is I just took some blue painter's tape and marked the outline of where the back of the seats ran. I folded them down and then uh, cut out cardboard templates to model that. And then basically my plan is to take those cardboard templates. I have a sheet of wood over here um, that I've had sitting around for a long time that I used on my workbench tabletop. And I'm gonna use my jigsaw, cut out these panels, um, do a little bit more than that, carpet them, mount them to the back of those seats. 
um, so that I have some thick anchor points to mount my amplifiers to. Um, in addition, I'm gonna try my best to do a really cleanly job on wires and spaghetti. It's one of my pet peeves is uh, having wires all over the place. Really would like to avoid any visible wires other than where they connect to the amps and to the line out converter. So hopefully I can make that happen. Last and hopefully it looks good. Out the door panels preemptively just to be ready. Ordered a package of door panel clips in the event that I break one or three, removing it. And uh, just good to have around. So hopefully don't have any issues, but uh, when you're doing this much stuff, chances are you're gonna run into an issue or two. Well, I hope going over um, all the different pieces involved in my build, uh, some of the rationale behind it, is helpful to you to bring awareness um, about things you should be considering when you are doing your build, if you're gonna be upgrading your car stereo, if you are hoping that you can get away with just uh, upgrading the speakers, you know, good luck to you, I hope you can. If uh, you discover that you need to go further, go with an amp, that type of thing, hopefully this helps you figure out what amp to select. Do you just wanna add a sub? Do you just want to do a four channel app and only give power to the front speakers and the other to the rear, you know? Uh, uh, anyways, there's a million different ways you can go. This is how I'm doing it. And next episode, I'll show you how I take, a, uh, take apart the car. And uh, with any luck, it goes relatively smooth when you're doing stuff like this. There's always going to be some issues. And you know that I'll be candid about it and I'll tell you what I run into. But, uh, that's all I got. And if you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. And if you got value from this episode, please give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't, go ahead and give me a thumbs down. Either way, would like to hear from you. Would, uh, if you see anything blatantly glaring that you think I'm doing wrong or uh, I should be aware of, uh, please get back to me quickly um, because uh, the knife is gonna start cutting, so to say, here in the next couple of days. But. Uh, Feel pretty good. Don't think I'm making any catastrophic mistakes in my plan and uh, we'll see if that bears fruit. So that's all I got. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.